Hey guys, it's Matt. I don't think you can just listen to this one. Too many video clips, images, pictures, analysis of the pictures. So you're going to need to see this one. Before covering the Tool Fear Inoculum um, video that's inside the CD case, I'm going to cover the strange animation that is inside you know, the Band Tools CD case of Fear Inoculum. It's being charged. People are like, what is this? It's being charged in my power strip. I don't know how many CDs. Jerry sent me this, and we thank Jerry for this. Um, how many CDs come with an HD video player that needs to be charged? I'm going to cover this creepy character here. So before we do this, I just I figured it's a good time because I'm going to I'm going to cover it using the handheld camera. I don't know the copyright issues on that video. I'm going to use this, but this is the highly sophisticated studios where it all takes place. Let me just show you a few things for a few minutes. I rent this from the Walt Disney Company for two hundred thousand dollars a month. Uh, the Mac, where I sit here, and I make videos here, and um, the Mac is so old it doesn't even communicate with my YouTube studio anymore. I do the movies here, and then I take them over to this PC, which fortunately still does communicate with YouTube. And, and one of the reasons this video is going to be all over the place, not that I guess some people might actually like to see the cats that I talk about, but... There is a copyright issue with the animation movie that's inside the Tool CD. Someone had loaded it, and then the last time I went to look at it, which was about two weeks ago, it said removed. So it's good that I did do it. I recorded this about two weeks back with a handheld camera. And if it's one of several things in a the video, um, they'll probably allow it, make it look like an unboxing, and the cat video has probably really confused the bot. Um, someone had sent this to me. I found it very interesting. Um, Super Tramp, remember the famous 7-Eleven uh, was a part-time job? Uh, well, here's the other album, Crime of the Century. It spells Super Trump. It says Crime of the Century. This Super Tramp album goes back to 74, and it has a uh, dream or, you know, nothing but a dream, or you've heard that. Now, this is the one that's covered in the truth community. You almost can't cover this enough, and this is incredible. It's 79, Super Tramp, Breakfast in America. Now, we know what happens when you flip it, what's well, over the Twin Towers, but you're looking out an airplane window. I know you all know this. You can't cover it enough. It's fascinating. You're looking out for the album cover, an airplane window. You know, the orange codes to the 33, the only uh, color that codes to the 33. You have the 9, uh, 7 Eleven is a part-time job over the towers when you flip it. And you're looking out an airplane window. If you look at the lyrics to the Logical song and some of the other songs, and it's called Breakfast in America. So the exact mean or the, the average time the event happened in 2001 was basically like the, your exact mean or breakfast time for the country. Somebody called me. I was out west in San Francisco, woke me up. So I wasn't having breakfast. And it was a little bit... Later, you know, 8, 8.30 something, most people had already had breakfast on a work day in the East, but the at mean average time when this thing went down, yeah, breakfast in America, and you're looking out an airplane window, and there's your 9 and your 11 over the towers. Really? Girl, this is the Feed the Addy Girl's room. We do leave the door open now. Zara does not come in and harass her. There's her litter box that Zara has not been into yet. Just, she used to hide from me, and she had a lot of emotional problems. She's doing so much better, so much better. Okay, who is Tool? Not a lot of people are that familiar with Tool. Um, I was familiar with some of their early, uh, pretty hard rock and roll. I'm not sure what genre you'd put it. It's not grunge. It goes back to the 90s. It does definitely doesn't fit into that grunge. It's, it's a very unique sound, all their own. Um, Stink Fist is a famous song, if you run in these circles. 
Prison Sex, <laughs> which was removed from MTV. Um, oh, you know, there, there's not a, you're not going to be really familiar. Most people are not going to be that familiar unless this is your thing. So I'll just present this in a very general sense. Before I do, I cover the animation. Hopefully, uh, Google, YouTube will let me cover the animation from a handheld camera because that is really, really intense, the message that's potentially being delivered there. But, guys, you probably understand what my position would be on these bands. Would it, if a band makes it into prominence, they are a, pu a puppet or a pawn and a tool for the system itself. I don't think there's any exception to that. I really don't. Um, I don't think you're going to say, well, Matt, this is a famous band, and they made it on their own, and they were just discovered, and they don't serve the system. I, I don't buy it. I don't think there's any exception to it. I think the truth drop in Under the Silver Lake, the creepy, demonic um, piano player, basically tells the kid, he, he created everything. I wrote everything and just gave it to Kurt Cobain. And tool, you know, bands are used for different purposes in this system that lays down its master script. Now, tool is used for, I mean, it's a, to the message delivered, you know, somebody, you, you could study for six months, the occult or esoteric nature of it and still not get to the bottom of it. And that will be expressed when I cover the creepy video. And I don't, I don't have the time and I don't, I don't want to cover it. I don't think anybody listening to, to me should look into tool for six months because it would probably lead us back to information that we already know at this point. Not that we're so advanced, but we've we've got some things covered at this point. We don't need to look at all the predictive programming and all the messages that come through music and movies anymore. We pretty much tells us what we already know. But people that really believe in a band, they don't want to believe that they're just a puppet and being used by the system. Um, Greg, you know, my, my buddy Greg, my confidant who I can bounce anything off of. I mean, you know, I'll pick on him for a second if he still listens to some of my videos. I know he wants to believe, he loves Pink Floyd. I just, of course, I, I really like Pink Floyd, but he's a 10 out of 10 on Pink Floyd. He doesn't want to believe Pink Floyd is just a, a tool, a puppet of the system, but in, in, yeah, they pretty much are, in my opinion. I don't think there's any exception to it. All right, the best example of that, you just want to continue with this theme before we dive into tool. My favorite example is this guy, George Michael. Now, I like George Michael singing. I like a lot of the, the music. He is as talented, pretty much as they say, composed a lot of the, plays a lot of instruments, wrote a lot of the, the lyrics, did most things himself. Uh, but see, everybody, every band plays a different role for the system. This is what this guy's role was. Um, you know, of course, you had the whole coming, the coming out thing uh, was supposedly straight, but then uh, Matt, you thought George Michael was straight during Wake Me Up Before You Go Go? You're missing out, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I could see he was. It was pretty clear early on, but the whole coming out thing pushed the gay agenda. But you remember he had that that incident with the with the in the bathroom, the L.A. Was he? Was it Griffin Park? Or I don't know where it was. He was creeping around gay bathrooms in Los Angeles. That that didn't happen. I mean, it ha it probably happened. It's a humiliation ritual. He had to go through it. It was part of the script of who is George Michael. Look at this. George Michael, born... Oh, he, okay, here's the other... Let me just cover the most important thing first in terms of playing out your script. Um, his most famous song, Last Christmas, a Christmas song. He died on Christmas Day. Really? Yeah, sure. His sister died on Christmas Day three years later. What are you saying, Matt? He's not really dead? I don't think so. No, but if he could be, but it's it just, I don't care. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All you need to take away is this reality through its puppets and pawns plays out a script. How does that happen? I don't, we don't know, but it, you don't need to know. It wants you to try to figure it out for the rest of your life. And most, and, and there's no doubt, um, by the way, look, George Michael born, Georgios Kyriakos, he's Greek, Pana, Panioto, what? That's so horrible. Panayoto, what? That's like, that sounds like um, the language Princess Leah uh, spoke in Jabba's castle or Jabba's palace when, when she had the mask on. Oito, oito, when she was trying to wake up um, Han Solo. 
And um, I'm sorry for butchering the Greek. Of course, that's ridiculous how bad that was. I knew a, a Greek, I cooked with a Greek guy when I was just 16, had a job washing dishes, short order cook. Hairiest guy I've ever been around. He would have a gigantic thick five o'clock shadow by five o'clock. I mean, literally a thick beard by five o'clock. And hair would just pour up his neck underneath this t shirt. Anyway, so guys, this is all a script died 25 December 2016, age 53. You know, it, what, is he really dead, or is he with David Bowie on the island? Um, how about, yeah, that's probably what the song My Own Private Idaho is about, the B-52s. B-52s. So, puppet of the system. Oh, here, look, he's an LGBT rights campaigner, all part of the script, all used. Yeah, in the meantime, they let him write music. They let him, you know, tour, and he probably really wrote... Um, father figure, and it really is good. It's a it's a good song, but 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 he had to stay inside the box and see. With George Michael, I thought this video was supposed to be about Tool. I'll relax into it. It's going to take a while. Um, with George Michael, I believe he's very very smart. Very very. He sensed. Uh, you could see he was very very stressed out, and he sensed he has. You know, you early on in their careers, these people climb under the dragon's wing. But they don't really realize, oh, it's just part of the business, and maybe a producer tries to pull their willy a few times, and there's, you know, I don't, you know, there's some 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 eyes wide shut parties that they they shouldn't be at, and but then they realize, wait a second, I'm really under some sort of creepy dragon's wing here, and I think he realized that, and he started to check out. That's why he checked out for a while and started to act strange, but then the creepy system you know, represented by that guy in Under the Silver Lake that writes all the music, um, who told the kid, I write all the music. I gave that to Kurt Cobain. He didn't write Teen Spirit. I did. That creepy scene from Under the Silver Lake that's so interesting. I think, you know, George Michael, you know, the guy visited George and said, you know, in a obviously a figurative sense, I don't know how the creepy, Under the Creepy Dragon Wing works, of course. But he said, no, you're going to, you, 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 you signed up for this, George. You, you know, He'll, they'll point him back to when he agreed to something or, quote, made the deal with the, quote, devil. Um, is that something he can, they can point to where he signed in blood? No, but they'll say, you know, you agreed to this, right? You wanted this. And he'll say, yeah, then you need to stay within the bookends of this script. You know, disputes with the record company. It's just the same thing. But the, the humiliation ritual about he goes to the you know, was he's just roaming around bathrooms in the Los Angeles area. Of course, look at this, performed live at Live Aid, in the biggest fraudulent thing of all time, put together Bell Bob Geldof, Geldof, Geldorf, whatever, who cares? Um, he's, the, um, what's I, the song, Tell Me Why I Don't Like Mondays, he put that together. But then he's going he's gonna to bring in all of these artists saying, you, you know, I'm putting a charity event together. He can just make phone calls and get um, Elton John and all the biggest singers in the world, this Geldof to me or whatever. He is so high connected in what you would call the Illuminati. You can't not take his phone call, perhaps. Or he was working for the person that has that level of control. And when he called this guy, he knew to take the phone call. He could not not take the phone call. But part of the script, maybe, maybe he, maybe he, strayed from the bookends of the script. I said, okay, well, you're going to be punished in a humiliation ritual. I, guys, I don't know the in, ins and outs of this stu- exactly. I just get a sense as to how this reality works. I'm going to be wrong a lot, but I'm going to be pretty close a lot of the times. I, I just observe reality. I have nobody telling me anything or insider information other than what Tony tells me about simultaneous and sequential incarnations. We'll talk about that some other time. Said so you've you, you've really strayed, George. You need to do a humiliation ritual, and um, you know you're gonna find yourself roaming around the bathrooms of L.A. looking for gay sex and weird greased up holes. And but I mean, come on. So, but the thing that's so ridiculous about it, if anybody's yelling at this video, say, well, Matt, he's some pervert. Why why would he not be roaming around bathrooms? And no, George Michael could probably get a lot of really really good looking gay guys. I mean, he doesn't have to roam around bathrooms, you know. One of the best-looking men in the world, um, most famous, richest, needs to roam around bath. Come on. Well, Matt, he was just a pervert. No, it's part of the script. Okay, it was part of the—no doubt about it. And think about—talk about getting lucky as a gay guy. 
just roaming around the dark parts of Ventura Boulevard or wherever it was off the strip or uh, Van Ness, Van, Ness uh, Van Nuys Avenue or whatever, and you go into stall number six and there's George Michael. You want to talk about getting lucky as a gay guy? Coming into stall six here, the red light was on you. It's like a, the way a cab announces it's, it's open, it's free. You look like George Michael. I am George Michael. <laughs> Would you like me to sing uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, before we, uh, before we go-go? I mean, give me, you want to talk about getting lucky? It's a joke. Because, well, you know it's a joke because maybe they made him really go through with it. Maybe it was real, but that's part of the humiliation. But the point is, then he has to uh, go back. He, he goes back to the UK. Three or four, five years later, the same thing happens. He's arrested for soliciting weird, some kind of perverted sex in bathrooms. And that was not really covered in the U.S. Same script. It's like he's going to do it again in the U.K. Come on. A joke. I believe this. Prince died in an elevator. David. But it's all part of the script. Whether they really are do- dead or not, it doesn't matter. It, we live in a gigantic script. This is the luckiest man ever to live, this Andrew Ridgely. Be like, you know, uh, I don't know, trying to... You just want to learn how to box, and your next door neighbor at 14 is Mike Tyson or something. He just just hooked up with one of the most talented, greatest voices in music history. This guy got a little lucky, but um, anyway, this is the Boots a Girl. <laughs> boots a Girl, you gonna pee on my floor today, Boots a Girl? There's a litter box. We got two litter boxes. Any pee down here? I don't know. I boots a girl. Hi, sweetie. Thir- the gray ladies. 13 or 14 year old gray ladies. All right. I went over it so quickly in the last segment where I was all over the place. I just want to spend two minutes here because this, if what else do you need that proves script? This is incredible. Um, but everybody just glosses over it like your neighbor would just think it's a coincidence. And my friend Ken would just think it's a coincidence, of course, even though we have tens of thousands of these coincidences now over and over and over again. George Michael's most famous song, Last Christmas. Now, I know it was under Wham. Andrew Ridgely didn't do anything. He didn't. I think he just, um, I don't know, he got George coffee or something when George wanted his coffee, and he warmed up the tea or something. He didn't do anything. Was, the talent was with George Michael, the face, the star power. This guy, again, like I said, is the luckiest man in the world. So George Michael's most famous song is Last Christmas. Don't tell me it's um, Faith or um, Father Figure or um, Everything She Wants or uh, what was that song? Um, Careless Whisper. No, 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 no. Last Christmas is played over and over and over and over and over again in like every single Western mall or every single Western country that celebrates Christmas for the past 25 years. It's been played 100 times more in total because of the Christmas season than any other Wham! or George Michael song. So his most famous song, by far, Last Christmas. He dies on Christmas, and his sister, three years later, dies on Christmas. Oh, my goodness. And no, he's just, these people are all doing, they're, they're not under the dragon's wing. They're not doing what their masters tell them. They, they wanted to take this picture. <laughs> Oh boy, let's get back to, if, are, are we ever going to get to Tool? I mean, is, if you're yelling at this video, it's deservedly so. The, uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the Sun that can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets. Guys, trust me on this. I just went over this for the first time a few minutes ago. When I went to it, just you just when you read the Matrix Code, you get creepy feelings about certain bands or certain people, how they're tied in, like the way I talk about Bob Geldof or Geldorf or whatever his name is. He's the Boomtown Rats, how he's tied in. And there's going to be all sorts of creepy stuff here. And just in scanning it quickly, it just started to pop out all sorts of creepy stuff. So let's just go over it. And, you know, was anybody surprised? No. People yelling at this video, you should be like, Matt, of course there's going to be creepy stuff. What do you, you know, you think you've got some sort of unique insight? Yeah, I, okay, you're, you're right. It, it should be pretty predictable. Tool's an American rock band from Los Angeles, formed in 1990. Danny Carey, the drummer, guitarist Adam Jones, vocalist Maynard James Keenan. Um, 
Justin Chancellor has been the, ba- the band's bassist. Like, I'm not going to read all this. For some reason, just take it or leave it. We'll let it go. And Maynard James Keenan, when I read it, just pops out to me. Pops to me. Um, uh, John Maynard Keys or K- Kinsey in economics. It just it looks like the same name, but but John Maynard Keys K- Kinseyan is the way it's pronounced. Very similar for some reason. What's the relationship? I, I don't know. Maybe probably none. So um, goes back to the '90s. They called alternative metal and um, formation. First ba- first uh, album goes back to '89. Opiate, opiate, probably predicts the opiate <laughs> crisis coming uh, to the United States. Undertow, 1993, 1994. Prison sex was removed from the MTV playlist and deemed too graphic and offensive by music, much music. But he asked, oh, Matt, if it's, they're all working for the system together. Well, MTV is, nothing is more of the system than MTV. They, in their headquarters in some Masonic temple. So, so what if prison sex was removed? That doesn't mean that it's not all part of a script. Alex Jones was removed or banned at all part of the, the script. It just, it's not, it's, it's to get dummies to believe Alex Jones is saying things that they don't want to be said. It's, and its script is very pathetic at times, very easy to see through. But check this out. I just saw this literally 30 seconds before I started recording this video. Here is the, here is the enema and saliva. Does it say saliva? Yeah, saliva. So no, Sally Val. I don't know, but the way this, you know, I don't know what the A and E combined. I don't know what that is. Um, somebody can comment, but it's like ether. You know, ether. The ether is written like that. I don't know what that means. Where that even comes from? Um, it's probably something. In all the investigations I've done, I should know about, but I don't. So, but look at this. Alternative version of the anima artwork shows a dedication to comedian Bill Hicks. <laughs> as another dead hero. I mean, okay, you know where we're going here. Is Bill Hicks Alex Jones? Probably. Yeah, probably. How they pull that off and, you know, how did, how did they get the old Alex Jones videos when he's clearly in his 20s trying to, like, you know, uh, take his camera crew into uh, the, the uh, Austin um, County Sheriff's Office and you know, Alex Jones looks like a tw- 29 or 30 year old Alex Jones and how they did all that. I don't know, but, but it, it is, it is probable <laughs> they are the same person. However, they, however they pulled that off. I mean, in the, what was it? The Kavanaugh trials chief, was it not chief justice Kavanaugh, whatever Supreme court justice Kavanaugh, um, his accuser, whatever her name was, Christine, I don't know what that thing was. But that she she testified first, then he came out separately. And there's a there's a segment of the truth community that believes that was him. I mean, that was him. He was he, the the chief justice was playing. He was playing the role also of the, of the victim, dressed in drag, and as absolutely insane as that sounds, to the one guy or girl stumbling upon this video, I'm telling you, it's possible. It is it is so bizarre and creepy how this reality does business. I can't say it was really him, but I don't know what that thing was, his accuser. It wasn't, there was nothing real about it. It wasn't a real victim. I mean, it was all a, a stage show. I mean, if it wasn't him, it probably was a man. But but there's, there's actually nothing more bizarre to me than those Kavanaugh hearings with whatever that thing was that was his accuser. Um, everything is fake. First single, Stink Fist. Um, all right, let's just get through this. Lateralis, 2001, 2005. Um, all right, where did I see? The, okay, 10,000 Days, 2006, 2009. Okay, Fear, the current uh, album, and where the this video, this animation video, there's some sort of HD screen in the cardboard box of the CD. Fear Inoculum, Inoculation. You know, um, look at this. On September 11th, <laughs> 2018, Keenan, James, is James Maynard Keenan, announced via Twitter 
that production of the record was progressing and that vocals had been written. On September, just of any day, just of all the gin joints in all the world, just happens to announce September 11th, tw- September 11, 2018, he announced via Twitter that there would be a new, uh, you know, record called Fear Inoculum. And somebody somewhere, some one guy somewhere pointed at it and watched all the tweets from Keenan and interpreted it. And, 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 you know, one guy said, oh boy, a tweet on September 11th about inoculum, inoculation, and the, the, the sum's coming, sum's coming. And he ran to the hills and screamed like the boy that cried wolf and everybody just pointed at him and declared him conspiracy theorist. But one guy somewhere was on to this, based, probably based on this. It's no coincidence via a band like tool that presents the esoteric and cult me- message, the the deepest, darkest, creepiest secrets of the system that their their album now is called Fear Inoculum. Of course, it's not a coincidence. But um, I don't know if there's much more here, guy. Guys, we'll take a quick look. Here's the a lot of really cool. I mean, really dark, cool videos from the '90s. Like you could look up. Look up Stink Fist, which is I've shown some bits and pieces of. Look up the music video for Sober, Claymation Animation, really cool. Um, but, you know, extremely dark, too, if you people understood the, the meaning behind it, which I don't understand the meaning behind most of it, and I don't... But I'm sure if you went through this, there'd be, there'd be five other things, just creepy connections, but we're not going to waste time here. Let's go on had to show this one more time before the election. Ever wondered what happened to the creepy kid from Deliverance who does the dueling banjos? It's Joe. It's Joe. Joe, he wasn't, Joe's not a a inbred from the hills of West Virginia with an IQ of 20, but he played that kid. He dabbled in the banjo back in the day, and he played that kid back in the day with no makeup. That was Joe. These are the album releases from Tool starting in 1991 and the associated logo of each album release on the left. 1992, OP8, Undertow, 93, 96, Anima, if I'm pronouncing that right. Anima, Anima, I don't know how to pronounce the A smashed together with the E. Sal, looks like Saliva, Salival, 2000, 2001, Lateralis. Look at the logo. Looks like two towers on each side, and it makes the T something going through the tower. It's not a coincidence, that's the 2001. Look at the bottom, though. See the, see the fear inoculum? Look at the bottom logo for the current CD we're going to look at. This is another look at it, and uh, yeah, it looks like a syringe. When you do something to it, and you flip it, um, this is what you get. And it's called fear, ino- fear inoculum. And um, I don't know exactly, you know, this is floating around the internet. Somebody sent this to me, but, but I've seen it in a few different places. I don't know how you have to combine the logo to get this, but... In other words, I don't think it's much of a stretch. I think it is all by design. I think this is the type of creepy messages that this band, their role is to carry. And if you're ready for it, let's 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 stop with the jokes and the Joe Biden dueling banjos and get into the more serious aspect of this video. Maybe they're, part of the reason I've maybe been all over the place is maybe I've been a little a little scared to get into the creepy aspects, which I, which I have to do right now. Tool drummer Danny Carey. As bands get creepier up the ladder towards the very occult, strange, esoteric messages being delivered, like Britney Spears at the bottom, then you go up through a Nine Inch Nails and you get into the tool range, constant presentation of the 33 over and over again, constant presentation of the symbolism. You know, I got to wear the 33 again? Yeah, we put the 33 jersey on again. Again? You know, okay, John, is it, no, Maynard James Keenan, the lead guy, with his symbolism shirt, water at the top, some kind of bug or bee on the left, 33 degrees on the right, and the bottom is a pendulum. And, you know, we're, we're sick of it. You know, people in the truth community, they're presenting the 33 again? Again? Yeah. Aren't we sick of the sa- uh, an eye again? The same one eye symbolism again? Yeah, again. We're tired of it. And they're probably tired of it. But see, whatever their role is at this creepy level, they need the power, as Levette would say. They and I don't know where Levette is. I hope I hope I hear from her soon. <clears throat> Email me, Levette, if you hear this. Um, they need the creepy power of the symbols. 
the constant presentation of, of the occult numbers, the constant presentation of the symbols. Their magic in some way draws power from it in ways we don't understand. They can't just put it away and say, ah, we're getting tired of it. We're not going to, they can't ever put it away for some reason. I don't know how it works, but even this picture, this guy's not doing, any, somebody this creepy is not doing anything for no reason. His hand underneath that bug or whatever that thing is in this picture. It's not, well, it, Matt, it's just when they snap the picture. It's just somebody took a picture. It's just when Zabruder took this picture. No, it, it's all a, a creepy bloke like this. <laughs> it's it's all by design. Right hand under that symbol means something. What does it mean? I don't know, but it's the creepy bloke like this doesn't. They don't just snap a picture at random. Well, let's get into the CD art and the box and what's inside. You know, 99 point whatever percent just believe it's just pretty pictures. Oh, isn't that cool what Tool did and the artist? Just pretty pictures. It's absolutely, the meaning of, of, of this is off the charts. All the strange Tool artwork, not just for Fear Inoculum, but going back, I think many other albums, is this Alex Gray. So we need to look into him to try to follow a few yellow breadcrumbs um, you know what kind of art is he presenting where's the main art for the fear inoculum concept let's see if there's anything else here we want to take a look at again I think his relationship with tool goes back goes back a long way versus this is a this is like concept art on the video we discussed very similar to what we looked at the the infinite number of eyes looking at the uh, the human vessel about to be sent in. Let's see if there's anything else here. No. Again, it's all interesting, but it's uh, very similar to what we what we looked at. Let's let's look at this guy's Wikipedia page, I guess, Alex Gray. I'm gonna show you a series of pictures from the booklet that came in the CD. I'm not going to even attempt to decipher anything at this point. I don't know how close I'll even be able to get at the end to decipher any, any of this, but there's no reason to get ahead of ourselves. This is the main image, a theme from the book. A dualistic figure that is bound at the waist um, you, that carries through, you'll see in the video. And I just want to show you some other pictures. Again, I'm, I'm not going to decipher any of this. I just want to show you, get, you get a feel of the, there's no album that's ever delivered this sort of symbolism, and it all has meaning. There's no question about it. It's not pretty pictures. One of the main themes when you go through the book is it'll present, well, fractal nature of everything is a huge theme of what Tool's presenting here. Endless fractal, Mandelbrot set, but you'll see there's always a filter. You, there's, a, there's theme of there's a picture like this, and there will always be a filter or a like a tracing paper that can be laid on top. So here you're supposed to lay that image, which is like a, you can see through it, and lay it on top of the fractal eye. And um, I have an idea of what is trying to be presented here, but I don't want to get ahead of this. So when it's laid on top, this is what you see. Okay, and this is a theme. This is, it's like a tracing paper. You can see through it. That's a close-up. But each of what's laid on top is not the same. You'll see there's th this is meant to be laid on top of, of an image. You can see through it into the other image. There's the image without, see the tracing paper would be off to the left. And we'll ponder what the, the concept of the, you know, yeah, it gets to reality filter, underlying reality being much different than the filtered concepts that people live with in their day-to-day -day lives. It gets, it's along those lines, I think. We'll talk about it later. Look at the left. It looks like it says pneumonia. This is fear inoculum, fear inoculation. The song is like P-N-E-M-U-A or whatever. It doesn't say pneumonia, but that's what, that's what you really see. So I guess these are the band members. They have a symbol around them, but then there's a filter, you know, like a tracing paper you're supposed to put over top of the face. Each one has a little bit different symbol. Again, I don't. I guess that's that Maynard. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not intimately familiar with with Tool. Then you put the tracing paper. He has a different symbol than the others. You know, 
you know, this is, is this Brad Pitt from, um, is Louie in imp interview with a vampire? Maybe, I don't, you know, I'm just showing you some of the images. This image is on the front cover and the back cover, but it's a little bit different from front cover to back cover. So just to wrap the section up, guys, showing you some of the, I'm going to say creepy images in the book, but it, again, uh, you just get the sense that if these images have been hijacked by the system and used for bad things or whatever spell they put over people, the images themselves and the symbols themselves aren't bad or good. Uh, maybe being, you know, a pipe, um, you know, is a good thing. It carries water through the house, but somebody may break it off and hit somebody over the head with it. It's, the pipe had nothing to do with it. The symbol has probably nothing to do with it. It's just how they're being used. But just to, the way I started, people would think this is just pretty pictures. Oh, isn't it? It's so cool what they did. And it's not pretty pictures. It's esoteric and occult symbolism that relate to the core of metaphysical reality. Guys, as we followed the breadcrumbs many times over many years, you know, it just goes the same way every time. Like, were we going to find that tools just using some obscure artist that, you know, that they're, I don't know, they grew up with in the same town? And no, it's always going to be like a big artist that sees in this just some creepy stuff and some strange things. And that one strange breadcrumb leads to another strange bread. It's just the way it works, always. You'll see how this will play out. It's just the what, it's the, the it's the six or seven degrees. It's, I always forget if it's six or seven degrees of Kevin's bacon. It's just the way one breadcrumb always leads to another. The tool art led to Alex Gray, and you'll see this will lead to something strange coming up in a moment. But he's an American visionary artist. I guess what I'm saying is anybody surprised by it? It just works out like this every time, and we're kind of getting sick of it, kind of to a degree. It's just the same script. He's the chair of Wisdom University's Sacred Art Department. Wisdom University's Sacred Art Department. He's the chair. What's that? Is that like when Lisa asked uh, Akeem, you know, what do oh, you, I go to the university? Which one? The University of the United States. We don't even have a basketball team. I, it, what is that? Wisdom University? The Sacred Art Department? Co-founder of the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors? Early life. He was born... Uh, twin to Rosemary's baby, it says here. Now, I don't, you know, I don't want to condemn this guy. I don't know who this guy is. He might be a nice guy. It's not fair of me to say he's into dark, creepy stuff. I don't know. I don't know. He might be the greatest guy in the world. It's not fair, fair for me to, to put a connotation on him. I don't know where he's coming from. I'm not thrilled with, uh, you know, Maynard uh, and the tool group uh, saying, you know, telling us how he's been coughing with COVID and, you know, laying down whatever the system probably wants him to lay down. But see, it's just stuff just endless. I don't even, I don't know what I'm going to find here. Um, it says with whatever he does, artists with x-ray or cat scan eyes, the way Aldous Huxley saw a leaf when he was on mescaline. I mean, I know that's not a, why, why is, why does Aldous Huxley have to be presented in his Wikipedia article? I mean, if, if there was a Wikipedia article done about you, you think Aldous Huxley, Huxley would be mentioned or Orwell? It's just, it's the same old crap. Here, um, Tool featured Gray's artwork um, for Lateralis. He's also worked with Tool on 10,000 Days and Fear Inoculum. All right, let's get to the main point. So we have the Tool artist for all the creepy albums. Uh, let's see where the breadcrumbs lead if we just keep keep... We'll just search the line of yellow breadcrumbs that lead up through Alex Gray. So... Here's Alex Gray's painting from 1989, and it shows the Mother Gaia tree uh, with beauty on the left and pristine nature and world being destroyed on the right, two different sides. But we have, what do we have here? We have two planes over the World Trade Center on the side being destroyed, the side of the tree that's on fire. Oh, uh, anybody surprised? Me neither. Here's play number one. That's this. This is a uh, the fake Muhammad ATTA Otis plane. Flight eleven A is one. Atta one one eleven. Flight eleven towers making eleven. September eleventh. Here's the second plane on the side being destroyed. There's factory pollution, and so Alex Gray posts this. 
um, Alex Gray post on September 11th uh, will always be remembered in America for so many reasons. See, that's they love the you know again. I I don't I shouldn't be just indicting this guy without a full thorough research, but I just feel like I kind of getting a sense. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, maybe I should be a little fairer, but uh, September 11th will always be remembered. See, they love that. What what is what is the the mantra? The number one mantra: never forget, never forget. Well, Matt, that's positive. That's just never. They they spin it like it's positive. Have you guys ever thought that one through? But that that one's obvious once you see it. Never forget. Conscious. They want you to continuously relive those images. You keep cementing it. Real consciousness, like you and me, keep cementing it back into reality. Never forget. As positive as something very positive, it's not. It's exactly. It's it's real consciousness being used to lay down reality and to reinforce it. So. So again, should I be indicting Alex um, just because he's associated with Tool? No, but I don't like this. You know, I, even I can see that you don't keep running around saying "never forget," and he's saying it will always be remembered. See, that's just the same way of saying the same thing. Exactly what the system wants to present regarding Seven Eleven is a, or was a part-time job. He says we'll mourn the loss of lives uh, of to violence on our beautiful planet. Ah, shut up. In 1988, on the morning of our daughter's birth, I had a vision of Gaia, the world tree. (laughs) Come on, dude. One half was pristine nature. The other half was human forces of destruction, bringing down the the life web, (laughs) the worldwide web. Painted the vision in 1989, you know? Beastie Boys used it in their 1994 ill communication. Look the way that's written. It's line, line, line. Ill communication. They're all puppets, Beastie Boys. Oh, they're just they just talented. They were just discovered. All puppets. Sure, they were. They might have been talented, but then they were taken under the dragon's wing. Of course, number one hit. They used oh they it, they used the, the the vision, the image here in sabotage. Sabotage. They used it in sabotage the nine eleven image. Now, even if you know nothing about Tool, the people here in this group. Um, you can kind of see where this is going. Like, is anybody going to be surprised when we follow some breadcrumbs? We're going to see some strange, creepy connections to the system and some weird shit will pop up. Is anybody going to be surprised? You kind of can see the way this is going, how reality presents certain certain role players. And so let's just look at the wiki page of uh, Danny Carey, the drummer. He began expanding his studies into percussion with theory into the principles of geometry, science, and metaphysics, as well as delving into the occult. Oh, I'm so surprised. Is anybody surprised? Carrie has laid claim to various drumming techniques that use sacred geometry, sacred ge- geometric figures such as unicursal hexagram. Anybody surprised? The final product is very recognizable, fluent drumming, although to him, it's much more. The official tool website claims that Danny uses drumming as a ritual similar to occult rituals with purposes varying from spiritual exploration to a gateway which summons a demon. Anybody surprised? Me neither. The main guy, I keep calling him the main guy, maybe Carrie is, but Maynard, I believe is the main guy, the guy that had the 33 on his shirt. He has three bands, right? Anybody going to guess that one of the names of the band is just a regular name that doesn't have some symbolic meaning or some esoteric occult meaning? He has Tool, he has a perfect circle as a super band and Pucifer, Pucifer, perfect circle and tool. And he has a winery. It's called uh, Caduceus Cellars. You know, the Caduceus, I guess that's what, um, it's mistaken as the symbol of medicine. It's what Hermes carries. It's it's not the symbol of medicine. That's the rod of and septus and septus. But is it possible they, they can do anything without some sort of uh, symbolism? And guess what? Maynard had COVID, and he did an article for the Washington Post, I think it was. Oh, been coughing for months. <laughs> Anybody surprised? Yeah, we don't have to follow too many more breadcrumbs. Levette talks about the presentation of the rainbow flag, how they inverted it, like they invert everything, the red is on top. They want the the root chakra or the sexual chakra to be more important than the head chakra, the crown chakra, the purple on the bottom. They've inverted it. Okay, I'm going to show you the six-minute or so animation video 
where there's an HD screen in the CD box, but this part's not going to be for everybody. It's for people that really want to study it, really want to break it down, the meaning that it doesn't mean that tool's right and they're they're revealing the no nothing more about reality has ever been revealed than this. I just we're trying to break down what we think they're saying about the formation of life, the formation of the universe. It flies, it's going to fly in the face of Christianity. Of course, who we think we're dealing with here? Tool. So it's going to be for somebody that really likes to study and break down, and it's going to take a while. It's not going to be for everybody. There's no lo more light sections of this video. I'll break it down after this. Turn the volume up.
okay, guys, here's the hard part from my perspective. I'm going to try to tell you what message is being presented here. Now, for anybody that disagrees with me, I will point out the key elements. Like at this point, I'll stop and say everything being presented here in this little video inside the tool Fear Inoculum CD box, everything, the concept of infinite reality or Mandelbrot set or fractal building on itself infinitely is a theme that just pours out of this whole video. And I don't, I know this isn't the classic presentation of Mandelbrot set, um, but each point creates another point, creates another point infinitely. And there's an, an I or an element of uh, universal or God consciousness or whatever pr pr uh, that's, that's affiliated with the infinite presentation of how reality builds on itself. And I'll point out the key th elements, guys. So I've studied this for hours, so you don't have to. So you might say, Matt, you're going wrong here. I'll give you all the key elements. But at the same time, I'll, I'll present what I think it's trying to say. And again, guys, I'm going to try to present what I think they are telling us or trying to tell us. It, of course, it's not going to have anything to do with Christianity. Don't, you know, and there's a lot of Christians on this channel that, that I'm just telling you what they're saying, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying this is my belief set, or I'm just telling you what they're saying here, or my interpretation. And I wouldn't, if I didn't think I, I had a, a decent idea as to what they're saying, I wouldn't be making this presentation. But of course, uh, something, it's only the most occulted, esoteric, message ever delivered in a music album ever by a factor of a thousand so am i going to be arrogant enough to say i'm going to get that exactly right no but but nothing even comes close i mean the symbolism on led zeppelin albums i mean it's not even in the same universe as the ballpark is is what tools presenting here so let's let's go through this and i'll tell you again don't get upset at the messenger here's what i think they're saying i'm not saying anything about my own belief set here so, okay, it starts, and everything is fractal nature. Infinite upon infinities upon infinities, build upon infinities. The eyes are endless. And I think what they're show, showing here is uh, whatever. Uh, you could call it uh, God, original consciousness, original creation, getting bored with itself. It's just, just whatever, all that ever was, all that ever will be. Uh, it was never born. It will never die. It just always was. Whatever this is. And many people would say we are an aspect of, okay? It's it's endless endless eyes along the wall, and you know. Let me just show. Okay, the the um, it's like a Fibonacci sequence. Each little pock on the wall is an is a is an eye, and it's of course trying to tell you it is infinite, absolutely more infinite than the human mind can imagine. And to me, that's describing the beginning of this is is uh, God or whatever this thing is of. All that ever was, all that will be, gets bored with itself. It creates a, some sort of a human. It gets, I think the theme is here, it gets bored with itself. So let's continue. Just trillions of eyes is not the right word because that's finite. It's infinite. Okay. And it just, they keep zooming in and zooming out. And it's one fractal upon another. And then each little element is a fractal upon a fractal. And it, it, nothing is ever stressed infinite fractals like this video has. Okay, each pock on the wall is an eye, which is another, whatever, you, you understand. Okay, now it bursts this thing. I think it's, it's, it's whatever getting bored with itself. It bursts this thing, which of course is a representation of a human. It's, it's attached at the hip to its twin, the dual nature of itself. For some reason, it, I don't understand why it has eight total arms on each unit. There's no legs. It's bound to itself at the hip. The heads are a little bit differently. I'll point that out. I don't know why it has eight arms. That's, this is for the good commenters. It's, it's birthing. See, it's just, it's birthing this thing. Okay. And, and again, uh, you can, you know where I'm going with this. Um, it's bored with it. It's bored with its, its existence and it's going to send something uh, into uh, a reality or a universe it's going to create to have an experience. You know, we've heard this theme before, but this carries it carries it forth. So no longer just the endless eyes on the wall, it, it, it births a humanoid creature, a dual humanoid creature that's bound to itself at the, at the hip, 
or the or the you know the the waste, and then it creates this universe here. I think this this is another fractal, endless infinity, but it is separate. See, it's not attached to the wall. It is its own kind of creation here, and this is these are the hands of the. There's there's again, uh, each side has eight arms, four on each side, and. One, you know, it's the, the different. What's interesting, and this is absolutely a critical key in, in breaking this down, even though it seems to be um, the same, it's very similar each side. But I'll show you a better picture of one. One head is more of like a, a, a royal pharaoh's crown, and one head is, ver, is there's the other side of the head. Um, it's fragmented. It's kind of a mess. It looks broken, and we'll talk about that later. So. To me, it's it it birthed a universe, which is where we are, and it birthed a vessel so it can go experience that universe. I think that's what's being communicated here. And it just you know the music plays, and it has six eyes, three sets of eyes. I don't know why would it have three sets of eyes, but um, four sets of arms. I don't know. I, I don't know. I certainly don't have all the answers here. And let's continue. This is again the the unit. This is an infinite universe, but detached from the much greater. And as you look at the the details, I mean, again, each point spins and has an infinite number of points. And okay, there's there's m not trillions of eyes on the wall, an infinite number of eyes, but it's it's it, it's it's viewing, it's watching this universe. It's it's created, which is another inf infinity. All right, and that the all of this type of animation is showing is just the infinite nature. And I know I'm being repetitive, guys, but it's so stressing this um, the human vessel, some sort of human vessel being created, all the eyes watching, you know, all this. If you go back and watch it, the music and the the drama they create. And okay, it looks like the 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 hand touches it like whatever this represents, flower of life. You know, this universe is going to be like the rules here, the laws of physics. The flower of life is going to be like our universe. And this vessel is going to, per touching, touching it, reaching out and touching it, is going to merge with it or enter it. Um, I don't know why it just screams of um, touching of the screen, uh, the monkeys touching the monolith in 2001, the uh, event horizon, the first encounter uh, in that case encounter with hell is the the um what's his they call him baby bear whatever reaches it he touches the black goo reaches in I'm sure there's a million movie examples of something like this but to, to me that's the flower of life there it's not a classical representation of flower of life but the gateway or entrance way into this universe touches goes in of course it's just another infinity this one, you know, the stresses the um, the Fibonacci spiral, though that seems to be, yeah, that's the right direction, counterclockwise. The vessel enters. Okay, this is a key part. Here's a key part. All right, all the eyes were watching, but all the eyes now get covered up in a grid-like pattern. Um, the eyes are hidden. Um... So let me just show you here are all the all, all the eyes on the wall, and if you can see this, it's just there's the grid pattern, uh, hard su surface. So the eyes would be underneath that. To me, the message is I don't know uh, whatever's being created. The the reality itself, the greater reality, um, is being hidden by a grid or a false, um, um, or or this could represent um, physicality. Uh, something hard hiding the you know the true nature of of whatever of source or whatever creator of God or whatever created every everything. See here, it's the grid pattern forming here over the eyes, which which may represent you know physicality. Now the walls the walls now are no longer these eyes. It's the grid. It it looks like the inside of a tunnel. Like you could if you touch it, it would be like touching something hard. And I think that is a real key part of this presentation. This is the this is how they're joined um, at the hip 
um, there are not exact mirror images. And the, the, cr the crown or the head is ver different on one, but for the most part, they are mirror images. Okay, let's continue. This is the head of the... To me, the head of the one that's broken off will be the, will be the uh, representation of what's going to experience the universe or the reality or what you are now or what I am now. The, the one with the head that's kind of broken apart, that, that needs work, that needs help, that's in pieces. Um, and you'll see the other head is far more regal, far more divine. Uh, so, okay, the cra like a pharaoh's crown, everything's perfect on this head here where this head is just a is is kind of a mess it's in pieces and it's kind of the same thing but it's not certainly isn't this is perfect here and the side that's perfect or the or like the pharaoh's helmet or that perfect you remember that perfect helmet that yul brenner wore into battle that blue helmet wore into battle to when he was trying to run down moses just a beautiful thing what he, it's like that and this is the spiritual aspect or the connection. I would say that they're saying the connection we have with, with source or, you know, God or however you want to call it. Again, don't, you know, don't, don't get upset at my, per this is not my personal views. This is my interpretation of what's being said here. And it's, it looks like those things forming over top the head look to me like the, the edges of the tunnel initially. Let me go back up to it. The, you see that? The edges of the tunnel initially, the, the trillions and trillions, infinite number of eyes, you know, ultimate uh, God or source or whatever, bored with itself. That's what that looks like. Um, and another mini tunnel forming. And then the, then the energy or the connection shoots up through the spiritual side of the head. Again, the other head that's broken apart is down facing where Earth would be, for example, the energy connection, the spiritual bridge, the Thor's rainbow bridge. I don't know. Just throwing stuff out. Connection, though. Spiritual energy connection to whatever. And they're the, these are the, where the eyes were. Now the walls are, are, like I said, solid or this grid pattern. And, okay. Boom. Something is, is created. Another fractal, another infinite universe and but this starting to look more like the way nasa describes space this looks like and there's even a little mini big bang thing here i think this represents like there's like the stars here all of a sudden it it go it's sent into that that body that dual body that's connected at the hip is sent into this universe which by itself is infinite and now it looks like it this looks like more like our space and it, that does make sense to me, honestly. I mean, we ponder from the time we're kids, like, well, you know, science tells us the edge of the, we're, we're, you know, a star is basically the light's coming from the edge of the universe. Well, what's at the other edge? I, nothing. It just probably goes, oh, it's a fractal. It goes on infinity. This universe is, you know, how, however big this universe is. You know me, I'm not one that jump in a spaceship and go, you know, travel out somewhere. I don't think anybody goes anywhere. But however universe, how big this is, even if NASA's right about the size of it, it's still one one hundredth trillionth of what what's on the other side. It's, it's infinite. There is no... We're starting to realize that about everything. There's no birthing of anything. It always has been. You always have been, always will be. It just... The human mind can't comprehend that, but that's why we're born into this body, so we don't comprehend it. Of course, it doesn't seem possible to us, but again, a fish in a fish tank, they think that's their predicament. They don't have any understanding of the Pacific Ocean out the window. So it's just because we can't comprehend that something has always been. The moment of your death, you could be like, oh yeah, I could totally say how something always has been. But just, just because we can't understand it now, and it's a mind better now, that, that shouldn't bother anybody. It doesn't, certainly doesn't bother me. So this looks more like our universe. Stars, or whatever, the Pleiades or whatever, I don't know. And it's stending the vessel. The vessel's being sent in to me so it can have an experience. I wonder what Tony would say about, you know, higher self sending an aspect of itself in. Um, and for some reason in this universe, you know, it was initially sent into one of those, but now there's three. There's three of these 
Well, there's actually four, three surrounding and one in the middle. Now, I don't know, you know, this is beyond me, guys, what the significance of that would be. I mean, how many, this, this vessel's already been sent into an infinite universe a few times already. How many are there? But this, this one infinity merges into another. It creates one, three into one. There's one in the center, three on the edges, creates one. And then it, then it is finally sent in, boom. And it's like a tunnel here. Reminds me of the tunnel in 2001, A Space Odyssey, the ending of 2001, A Space Odyssey, the five minutes of just lights going by Commander Bowman, the tunnel, Ellie Arroway or Dr. Arroway, Jodie Foster at the end of Contact, the tunnel. This is a theme that's in a ton of movies and all over the place, that tunnel. And let's see what happens here. Well, that's the end. It comes into... Now, how, why it ends like that, I, I don't, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, six basic points. But it is, again, this is, this is presenting, even though it's not in detail here, it's presenting to me, it's just going to be that same fractal triangles on top of triangles on top of triangles. So that's what I think it's saying. That's what I think it's saying. Uh, ultimate creation got bored with itself, created a universe, send itself and some part of itself into it to have an experience. Now, this is a unique or really kind of strange way of saying all that, but the theme, you know, as above, so below, the duality, you know, the theme of it is nothing new, of course, nothing new. And you might say, well, you know, all that, Matt, and we just got right back to the same place of a theory we've already heard before. Uh, guys, I'm, it seems simple now, like in... Obviously, you know, is it, is it that simple? I mean, if, we're, if it's that simple, maybe we're missing a lot. But in terms of this type of occult presentation through creepy blokes, but when you force, when you watch it, it seems it's it, when you watch it, it's not that apparent, really. I, I've it's apparent now that you can see it, and I've described it. But I've you know, it took me an hour of watching this thing over and over before I started to get the gist of what was being said here. And if anybody's yelling at their their um their your computer going, whoa, this guy, now it's it's just simple. It's something this esoteric has just become simple. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to sound like that. I, You know, I don't know. It just seems once you kind of, I don't know. I think I see what it's, what they're saying here. And, and, and it is simple. I mean, we've kind of found that out. The, ultimately, when we explore truth, the complicated always kind of does return to the simple. It always does. It's not like as we look for years and years and decade after decade, it just becomes more and more complicated. The complication is, and in, in, in the complicated theories are always kind of there to distract us, the endless breadcrumbs. And it's and, and ultimately, the final truths, of the, the highest truths, always seem to be found by cutting through the complexity and getting to the, the very simple. That was the main theme of Ianto's uh, movie that I recommended the other day. It's just um, all the complexity in the end of the day, you just pretty much have one thing in here that's real. Then the number structure of the universe actually is the template creation for physicality itself. It's, it's as simple as one plus one equals two. That's the, so if you're looking, you know, reality wants us looking in all these um, false places and, and complicated places, and the answer is never going to be found in a complicated you got to cut through the complication. And um, I don't know, you know, to, to what gets, what, what's interesting is you get into things like, does Tool, does Maynard know what this means? And does and usually, I'm going to stick to my, I don't know anything about Maynard or whatever, you know, was, what does Billy Corrigan really know? His, his album, one of his albums starts, um, you open the front cover, it says 17 seconds of this, 17 seconds of bliss, 17 seconds of love, and all this occult stuff. Look at Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, all the occult stuff. It's very, sim Billy Corrigan's role is very similar to, you know, Maynard here, very similar to uh, whatever, Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. And you think, what do these people really know? And I'm going to stick to my basic premise. They don't know that much. I mean, more than me and you, probably, you know, what families they were raised in, or that depends. But ultimately, you know, the, the minions are used by something to present ideas, deceptions, whatever, this, something like this. It doesn't mean the minions presenting it actually know 
like the bass player of them. Remember, there was those. There was he's in a symbol in in the in the image we looked at, and then there's that tracing paper with another symbol, you know, on top of him. We should return to that and, and look at that the message there. Does he understand why that was he was presented that way in the in the CD cover? I don't think so. I really don't. Maybe. I don't know, maybe Maynard does have a clue as to what all this means. and But I don't know. Usually the Minions guys are used. The Minions are used, and the Minions, um, like Gaga, whatever, in my opinion, don't understand even half of what the message they're being used to present. But that, that's just from my experience in studying it. Okay, guys, one more thing that relates that we have to look at to form any sort of opinion as to what potentially is being said here is the presentation in the book, the book that's in the, the CD case uh, presenting the four band members. I guess this is a band member. I, I guess that's a band member. I don't know, but there's four of them. I guess that is that Maynard. I don't know, but I, but I think that's what's being presented here. But the key is though you go, you'll flip a page in the book and you'll see this, a symbol related to the endless fractal triangle, reality from the video, the animation video. The symbol will be over the face of the band member. But see to the left there under, that's my uh, left hand uh, under my thumb, there's that, it looks like a white piece of paper with another symbol. It's like a tracing paper. So when you turn that page, see you can see the guy's head is still there. So you turn the page and a symbol lays over top the other symbol. Right, so let's just show you how that's done on each band member. They're all a little different. This symbol, it's not Star of David. The line's broken through, but it's like that. Uh, the lines are not connected. But all of these symbols relate. They're just different aspects of that endless fractal triangle that was presented in the video. So you turn the page and you lay this symbol. This is showing all the endless fractal triangles over the, uh, how many points? Um, three, four, five, six, seven? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. That's interesting. Notice that the points in the um, Game of Thrones was also seven, which you know users see, used to seeing six or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Game of Thrones in the uh, in the stained glass was also seven, I believe. So let's go to another band member here. They, you, you, you get this more. You know, the, again, the, just showing more points coming out of more points. This is an endless infinite um, way they're showing infinity through the, these fractal triangles and then you turn the page and put this symbol over top and what do we have the same is it the same exact symbol I think so and inside each each of the points we have a little flower thing and then we have an eye with three circles so let's see we have an eye with three circles but this one has more points off the side but it's very similar. It's very similar to that. But the, the okay, so let's go to another band member. Oh, Maynard has more points. Is this Maynard? I don't know. Looks like um what does it look like? Looks like somebody I recognize. I don't know. We flip the page on him, and it's this. Now this is the same symbol, seven points, but without any other points. All right, and this guy has this is, I guess, the full symbols being created as you go on here. This is, all the fractals are there, but inside each point is another triangle inside of a triangle with like an eye, where it wasn't, see, it wasn't there. The, see the, the ends of the main parts of the triangle? There's just nothing there. It's very empty. The big triangle, the corners are the, the points of the big triangle, where he has little symbols inside of symbols. Again, just endless fractal. And then you put, you put the same... Well, you you put a very similar uh, over him. You can still see his, see his his face is still there. See how you turn the page. This is a better way of showing it. You just turn the page, and then this this tracing paper goes over top of his symbol. Now this one has less detail. It doesn't have the circles and the points, but it's all basically the same thing. And what is being said here? Um, the only thing I could interpret is um, a true reality and a filter, um, a fake reality. Um, you can see the person's very blurry through the filter. And, you know, but the real, let's say the real reality 
is one, two, you know, obviously uh, six points, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six points, the Star of David, uh, alchemical, you know, fire over water, not not air and earth, fire over water. But then the symbol um, creates, the, the, the filter creates seven points, opposed to six and changes the nature of the symbol so is this saying you know we are you know this is where you know Og Teles and all these guys would talk about the reality overlay of, of basically a fake reality is right in front of us keeping us from real reality and it does I don't know really know what that means but it always made sense to me or kind of resonated with me that they would need a basis on which to constantly perform the trick, to constantly lie and manipulate. And um, could they do that to base reality? Um, I don't know, but that's that seems to be kind of a message here. Um, and anybody, and this is this is from a comments section perspective, you know, maybe you've probably already commented, but this would probably be the most important area to comment. Why is there kind of in a tracing paper, you turn the page and place another symbol over top of these guys? And, um, you know, true reality potentially, and the, it's a blur. You can see the face and we're, maybe we're only getting, somebody might interpret it, we're only getting, we're only getting 10% of the information coming through. Most of it is, is the, the clarity of him is blurred out and there's another symbol. Um, Lavette would have a field day with this. I hope we hear from Lavette soon. Thanks for watching guys. I did the best I could with this. I think I've gotten us in the ballpark. But I don't certainly, this isn't my area of expertise. I came into truth by studying bang events. So a lot, a lot of smarter people are going to get close. Maybe I can, maybe I've built the foundation. A lot of smart people in comments can maybe get us a lot closer than I have. Thanks.